Carrots and beets are important root vegetables eaten in many places around the world. Whether eaten fresh, boiled, or pickled, these sweet vegetables are a delightful addition to a variety of meals. Carrots can have several different colors, from the common orange to red, yellow, purple, and white. Beets include the familiar table beet, chard, spinach beets, and sugar beets grown for producing table sugar. Root beets range from white and yellow to a very deep red, and they can also have stripes. Beet greens are also edible, and like chard, can have colorful midribs. The techniques used to make controlled crosses of carrots and beets are simple and can be expanded from a backyard to a commercial breeding program. Carrots belong to the family Apaceae, along with parsnips, celery, and many spices. The scientific name for the carrot is Daucus carota, and it is diploid with nine pairs of chromosomes. The ancestor of the carrot is considered to be the same species and is from the Middle East, Europe, and Africa. Around the world today, it can be seen growing on the side of the road or in gardens, and is also known as Queen Anne's Lace. Two other sexually compatible wild species are Daucus capillifolius and Daucus sahariensis. The carrot is a recent domestication and has only been eaten for the last thousand years or so. Beets belong to the family Chenopodiaceae, along with spinach and amaranth. The scientific name for the beet is Beta vulgaris, and it is also diploid with nine pairs of chromosomes. The wild ancestor, Beta vulgaris maritima, also known as the sea beet, grows in the Mediterranean, Europe, and some parts of Southeast Asia. The beet was domesticated about 4,000 years ago. Carrots and beets are both monoclinous because they have perfect bisexual flowers with both male and female parts. Carrots have many tiny flowers that grow in an umbrella-like arrangement called an umbel. The individual flowers have five petals and five stamens that have the pollen producing anthers. There are two female stigmas that each lead to an ovary that can together produce a total of two spiny seeds. Male sterile carrots actually produce a second row of petals instead of stamens. Beets also have very small flowers, but they are arranged in a vertical inflorescence called a panicle. Each flower has five green to reddish tepals rather than distinct petals and sepals. The flowers have five stamens and three stigmas and produce an aggregate fruit that is represented by a single seed ball. This seed ball can contain multiple embryos, but typically no more than six or seven. While the flowers of these species can be emasculated and crossed like other bisexual flowers, their small size makes this impractical. Instead, breeders can take advantage of the natural cross-pollination mechanisms of these two crops to get the job done. While carrots are pollinated by insects and beets are primarily wind-pollinated, the life cycles of these two plants are so similar that they can be grown side by side. Both carrots and beets are biennial crops, which means that they normally take two years to flower. To get these two plants to flower in the same year that they are planted from seed, they must be vernalized by simulating the conditions of winter. After growing plants to maturity in the field or greenhouse, the roots should be stored in a refrigerator for six to eight weeks at about three degrees Celsius. A standard kitchen fridge will work. It may be necessary to pack the tap roots in a paper bag full of wood shavings to prevent rotting. When the roots have been vernalized, this is a good time to check their quality before planting. Slicing the bottom off of carrots diagonally will not only indicate the health of the plant, it will also make them easier to plant into pots in a greenhouse. Beets can also be sliced, and a lengthwise cut will tell a lot about the condition of the root, and near the top will allow you to examine the rings. The plants will grow despite being damaged. If you follow this procedure, seeds planted in a summer field can produce flowering carrots and beets in a winter greenhouse and vice versa. The equipment necessary for crossing carrots can seem a little complex and strange, but it works well. Since insects pollinate these flowers very well on their own, breeders put netted enclosures around the plants and introduce flies to pollinate them. Common house flies will work, but commercially raised blue bottle flies are often used. Large cages can hold several plants, but if all you need to cross are two plants in pots, 
you can set up a small netted enclosure that will do the job. First, build a frame out of sturdy wire with a loop on the top and bottom. Fashion a cloth bag that will fit around the wire frame with enough material to cinch it at the top and bottom. To use it in a cross, hold up the frame with a wire hung from above or with stakes set in the pots and gather the two plants together inside the frame. Drape the cloth over the plants and tie it together at the bottom with a twist tie. At the top, a tube with a cork can provide an easy way to introduce flies into the bag. Now label your cross with the parents and the date. Remember to write the female parent first. When the flowers are ready to be pollinated, introduce the flies or their larvae and close it up again. The flies will be attracted to the flowers and move the pollen around for you. You may need to add flies each week to ensure that all the flowers are pollinated. Be careful not to let flies out of the bag or they might bring pollen to your other plants. Crossing beets is straightforward. The equipment you will need is a long paper bag to go around the plants, a tag, and a pen or pencil to label your cross, and a stapler to hold things together. A piece of cotton will keep your seeds from falling out of the bag. Select two beet plants that you want to cross and put a stake in one of the pots to hold up the bag. Bring the stems together and wrap the stems with a piece of cotton. Remove the secondary stems and flowers. Place the paper bag over the top of the plants and fold it tightly around the cotton. Fold the bag up diagonally from the bottom and staple the bag so that no pollen or seeds can come out. Staple the bag to the stake and your labeled tag to the top of the bag. Finally, make sure the bag is inflated so pollen has room to move around. Since beet flowers open daily and the anthers fall off before noon, you will need to visit your plants to lightly shake or flick the bags to release the pollen so that fertilization can occur. Beets can also be pollinated in a block such as for maintaining a diverse population. This should be isolated from other plants to maintain the genetic identity of the plants. Male sterile plants are used in both carrot and beet breeding to ensure that the pollen only came from one of the two plants, although very often the first crosses will be between two fertile plants. In order to determine which seeds came from a self-pollination and which came from a cross, you will need to examine the progeny when they are grown out. A simple trait that is different between the two parents, such as color, can help you determine if your cross was successful. When the plants are very similar, this becomes difficult, so today breeders use tools such as molecular markers that can test the DNA of each plant to make this determination. Harvesting carrot seeds is easy. After two months, the seeds will be fully mature and the umbels will be dry. Carefully remove the umbels and place them in a labeled bag for processing. For beets, Cut the plants off at the base and set the bags on their sides to dry. When these are dry, carefully open the bottom of the bag so that the seeds do not fall out everywhere. A tray can help you collect them for putting in a labeled bag. Carrot and beet seeds require some extra effort to prepare for planting. Carrots have two spiky seeds attached to one another, which must be removed from the umbel and separated from one another. Beet seed pods are also rough and hard. You can smooth out and separate the seeds by rolling them under a piece of hard ribbed rubber, and a sieve can be used to let finished beet seeds fall through. Carrot seeds can also be processed with your hands. To separate the seed pods from the chaff, gently blow them in a dustpan while shaking. Larger operations separate seeds with a mechanical blower. Heavy, high-quality seed pods remain near the bottom, while chaff and low-quality pods blow out the top. The seeds are now ready to plant. The colors of carrots and beets are not only attractive, but they also indicate the healthful properties of these vegetables. Carrot colors are caused by a class of pigments called carotenoids, many of which are precursors for vitamin A. The orange color of the common carrot today is caused by beta-carotene, 
and orange carrots have only been around for the last 300 years. In the last few decades, carrot breeders have even enhanced the amount of beta-carotene in carrots, making them an important source of this provitamin. In beets, the yellow and red colors are caused by pigments called beta-lanes. These are antioxidants, and some beets have been bred to have very high levels of these beta-lanes. The red pigment is now also used as a food coloring. Whether you are looking for a healthy addition to a meal or to create a living work of art, breeding carrots and beets can be easy and rewarding. Mm -hmm.